We have a tiny bit of business to handle. First of all, um, happy Pi Day. <laughs> you realize what I'm talking about? It's March 14, 3.14. Not Pi like. <laughs> you didn't you didn't remember your math? <laughs> no, I think she had me for a teacher, Doreen. <laughs> um, our little bit of business is that we have to announce the slate of, of, of officers and board members for next year. Now that doesn't mean that you you can't lobby to run because our election is next meeting but per our bylaws we're supposed to announce a slate today so i'm going to turn it over to our vice president dolores who will announce the slate of officers for next year remember elections are next month and i came ill prepared so um Presently, we have our current officers holding office again, with what exception? President, of course, will be Gretchen. Vice President will be me. Secretary, Janet Winters. Our treasurer is gonna be a job shared by two ladies, Shar Taylor and Lori Cruz. Um, <laughs> And the, who do we have for board members? We have, we have Judy. Judy O'Loughlin and we know Jerry Lansidal. Jerry, Jerry Lansidal and Siobhan Slater. Yes. Got it. Okay. So that is officially um, the um, <sighs> nominations from our nominating committee. As they say, elections will be next month. Um, there are a few things that I think, um, well, first of all, before I do that, I kind of want to bring you up to date. Uh, we have Mike back in the corner who is diligently photographing the um, scrapbooks that are on loan from the Burton brothers talking about the whole history of Tropico Mine. He has already done one scrapbook, and I think, have you finished this one, Mike? It's a little more than halfway through. A little more than halfway through. As for those of you that don't know, Mike is the grad student from John Hopkins, who is helping us with digital curation, because let's face it, in this day and age, we need things that are not with us but out there so that everybody knows. And that's also true about your own family histories. I think most of you read in our last newsletter about that wonderful narrative that I received from Noel Dees' daughter, Nancy. Um, I hope you read it. It's a whole history of the, um, the building where we had our December meeting, the Hamilton Hotel, which became Juanita's, which became the Players Club, which became other things. Well, I also, along with that narrative, got about 60 pictures. So I can hardly wait to have time to put that together because it is a real find. Um, we are also working with the Burtons at Tropical Mine Mike and I are meeting with John Burton and his sister Wendy tomorrow up there because we're also trying to get that whole thing wrapped up. So anyway, a lot is going on. Siobhan, I think you had a couple of things you wanted to say, so without further ado, here is Siobhan, our program. Chairman. Uh, for those of you that walk, that read Facebook and stuff like that, um, Norma Gerber Cleet uh, just was an amazing woman that I never met. 
and she was always on my to-do list tomorrow you know always tomorrow and she did a wonderful job of looking up local history sharing those stories on facebook and she passed away last week the day after her birthday and i am just sick i am sick for her husband and for all those that loved her. And Jim Muma also passed away this last week. And my purpose in saying these things is that we are not recording history important. And Tom Taylor, it is. <laughs> uh, we, we need to record these stories and and we would like to record them firsthand. Uh, so many of these things, like Jane Panero, uh, the, the opportunity to have a firsthand story has come and gone. <coughs> so as you're reflecting on your own family history, if you'd say, hey, Siobhan, come have lunch with me, let's sit and poke around and see what kind of a story we could come up with. I would love to do that. We want your stories. They're vital, they're important, and there's a time when it becomes too late. So please, please, please get with me. So without <coughs> further ado, whoops, I will let Gretchen continue to cough. And I will have her make the introductions tonight because she has first-hand personal knowledge. So here you go, Gretchen. Well, we are really, really fortunate to have Margaret um, with us tonight. Right now is a very, very, very busy time for Margaret because she is the president of the Poppy Reserve Mojave Desert Interpretive Association, and the Poppy Reserve has been open since the 1st of March, and it's been rather challenging because we had to put in a whole other point of sale system out there, which Margaret worked very hard to get up and running. Um, none of us who volunteer out there are um, industry <laughs> savvy or, or um, savvy at retail sales, but we're becoming a little more savvy than we were before. Um, I have known Margaret for many, many years. She volunteered at the Poppy Reserve. Prior to that, she taught school in, in Lancaster. Um, and she's been our, our Permdia president for how many years, Margaret? Since um, 2010. Since 2010. Um, she is an extremely knowledgeable woman. And she has put together a great um, presentation on a very important lady. A lady that I did not know personally, but I can say I met her one time. <laughs> anyway, without further ado, Margaret, this is Margaret Ryan. some information that I already had about Jane as well as I went, I have a subscription to Ancestry and so I went online because I wanted to verify some of the information I already had by looking up census records and other records and um, so I did that so I'm really pleased about that. Also the information that I used to put this together is online and I'll give you the source for that when I get done tonight. So, is that better? <clears throat> yeah. Jane Panero, Jane Seymour Panero was an absolutely remarkable person. I have boundless admiration for her and everything she was able to accomplish. Oops. Oh. I'm pushing 
Okay, thank you. She was a self-taught artist and botanist, and your Christmas shopping. We're open until Mother's Day. And then, Margaret, yes. do you guys have copies of all of her prints out there that no. you can purchase, or how is that? No, we only have copies of a few that were selected that they, people thought might have interest to the general public. About 10 or 15 different ones, Janet? Mm -hmm. 15, I think. Yeah, and there are two different sizes, too. And they're matted, also. But we also do have um, note cards with her prints on them. Yeah. And that's one of the things that we decided that we would bring tonight, and that's why you have tickets. Janet, do you want to do the ticket drawing? While Janet is coming up, there's just a couple of comments that I remember. Although, I, as I say, I only met Jane one time. Um, I was told by Dorothy Bolt that when Jane was part of a committee, you didn't need the committee. <laughs> so that sort of tells you a little bit about, about Jane. And of course, Dorothy Bolt was also um, a force of nature. Um, all right, Janet. I, I was just checking. I think there were a couple of people. Did everybody get a ticket? Did you did Joe and Debbie? No, I didn't. You, you got one? Oh, okay. Yes, I see a hand up. Barbara? I just wanted to mention that the Allen Valley Rural Museum, which is on the fairgrounds, has a very, very nice display of Jane Pinero's uh, work. Yes, thank you, Barbara. I'm glad you, you mentioned that. It is, it is wonderful, yes. And one more thing. In, uh, April, we're doing a display of local wildflowers. So I need to get in contact with a picture of the poppy festival or a poppy reserve. So anyway, should be good. Okay. Now, the wildflowers actually are beginning to bloom. There's monolopia on Soledad. There, I saw some large yellow desert primrose along Sierra Highway, just out of Roseman, and I saw Mojave loco weed today. Oh, would you like to? I'm shaking and shaking and shaking. So pull out your ticket. We'll draw one, and okay, I think I'm looking. You know what? I can probably make myself good. Okay. Okay. Get it ready. I'll read the number. Um, probably only need to give like the last three digits. Zero, this is the last three, zero, four, zero. Oh, zero, four, zero. Gail, yeah. yeah. very good, very good. You don't have to get up. Great. I'll bring it to you. Oh, thank you. Jen. All right, well, unless you have other questions oh, do you need oh. Oh. or comments, oh, are there other comments or it. questions? Sure, sure. Well, again, Margaret, wow, thank look you at that. very oh, much. Gorgeous. A great presentation. Gorgeous. There are things over here on the table that you may want to look. She has the original. I'm lucky. Game Today's my lucky day. On from Liz These are Pratt gorgeous. And some of the articles. So please take a minute and take a look. And again, thank you for coming. And there is some of her hand woven basketry. And this is her cruel work coat, which was on display when. The um, History Museum in Lancaster did a uh, display, a uh, history um, display, of some of um, different items from Lancaster Women's Club, associated with Lancaster Women's Club. Here's a close up. And here she is wearing a crocheted shawl that she crocheted herself. This is an article that was published in the LA Times where she wrote. An interesting, lighthearted article about how she and Joe built a little um, patio, a shaded patio with bamboo in their backyard. 
Joshua trees particularly intrigued Jane, and she began making many pen and ink drawings of them. And I have one right here. Lynn Duprat, who had hoped to be with us tonight and wasn't able to. This is hers, and she let me bring it here tonight. I'll put it out on the table. So one of the really fun things about many of her Joshua trees is that they feature a whimsical touch and included hidden faces. So take a look at that and see if you can spot. There are three hidden faces. Think you see them? Well, here they are. This little guy down here. And here. And I have put close-ups in too. Now I think I'm when I look at this, I'm theorizing that this is actually a block print because she did do block prints, and I believe that's what this is. And here's a picture of her sketching in the desert. I think it may be Edwards Air Force Base. It looks like a um, dry lake in the background. I'm, I'm not sure. And another one of her sketching out in the desert. Great classic car, huh? <laughs> she was a founding member of the Allied Arts Association. And this is the part where I hope that Lynn would be able to speak tonight because the lady on the left is Juanita Carruthers and she was Lynn's mother. She owned the Carruthers Art Gallery, which was in the old Station 33 Firehouse and Cedar Avenue, close to Trosco Lancaster Boulevard, downtown Lancaster. From the gallery featured the works of local artists, including Jane and some <laughs> others whose names you would remember, um, you would recognize. Uh, Juanita and Jane were very good friends. And like I said, our previous secretary, Lynn Duprat, is Juanita's daughter. I'm hoping at some future point that you guys can interview Lynn and get her uh, input. So in 1963, together with members of the Lancaster Women's Club, including Dorothy Bolt, who's another famous figure who played in a very important role in the establishment of the Poppy Reserve, they established the first Antelope Valley Wildflower Center. Now raise your hand if you remember going to a wildflower center and they had the little jars with water in them, yeah. And in those days, we picked the flowers and put them in the jars of water and then they would identify them. And I remember going to these wildflower centers. Um, it's a couple years younger than I am now. And also, they did it up at High Vista, in what's now called the Killville Church. And that, that uh, I remember going up there, the ladies up in High Vista did the same thing, which was great for me because I was trying to learn about wildflowers. The location of the centers in the following years included a building on Sierra Highway that they rented, a convention center, the fairgrounds, the Fairmont Church, which I didn't know that, but they did have it. Um, it's now the Fairmont Church, but it was, I think, a store at that time. And Jane's painting were on display along with identified wildflowers in small containers in all of these wildflower centers. And of course, these were the days before it was easy to take photos. And so you can understand how, if you really wanted to learn about wildflowers, then you know they were actually picking them and putting them in those little mason jars with water. This information is from Milt Stark's article in the Adult Valley Reflections, winter 1996, and I have a source for this online. Now, a botanist from UC Davis happened to visit one of the wildflower centers. And after examining Jane's watercolors, he urged the women club to buy as many as possible to preserve them for public view. He declared them to be botanically correct and real quote, really quite a treasure. And this is the Lancaster Women's Club Executive Board. That's Jane in the middle. You could always pick her out. And on the far right is Dorothy Bolt. In 1970, Dorothy, as chairman of the Conservation Committee of the Women's Club, spearheaded a plan to buy Jane's watercolors. Jane agreed to sell 125 of the paintings for $5,000.
Dorothy was able to involve 14 other local organizations to form the Wildflower Preservation Committee, an ad hoc committee of the Women's Club. The purpose was to raise the money to buy the paintings. About this time, Jane received a copy of a five-year study done by the Resources Agency of the California Department of Parks and Recreation, which recommended that the best location for a state park to preserve the state flower was around the Antelope and Fairmont Buttes, 14 miles west of Lancaster. In view of this recommendation, the Wildflower Preservation Committee decided that once they had raised the money to buy the paintings, their next objective was to raise money to buy land for a poppy park. Dorothy Bolt and the Wildflower Foundation contacted the California State Parks Foundation, and the foundation immediately set a poppy park as their highest priority. Money was raised through many means. I gave the save decals that were designed by Jane. Pennies for Poppies was a local school initiative that eventually went statewide. Land deeds, where you, if you contribute a certain amount of money, you got a deed. Also, the California State Parks Foundation got corporate donations of $350,000. Land acquisitions first was 1,700 plus acres purchased on Antelope Butte. 990 acres were purchased from the Munns family and Forrest Godey made two large donations of land. In April of 1976, the Poppy Reserve was founded. The caption, this is, a cap, this is from Antelope Valley Press, I believe, and the caption says, something to smile about, Herbert Rhodes, director of the California Department of Parks and Recreation, accepts deed to wildflower land from William Penn Mott, Jr., President of the California State Park Foundation. Jane Pinero, longtime advocate of the Poppy Park, approves. Ceremonies were held April 24, 1976, when the first 2,000 acres of the park were dedicated. Fundraising will continue for additional land and a nature center on the park site. This is the program for the dedication. Of course, that's Jane's artwork. Sadly, Jane passed not long after the Poppy Reserve became a reality, but isn't it great that she did live long enough to see it become, um, to see it actually get dedicated and become something that she could remember. This is her obituary from the um, LA Times. And not long after that, in 1981, they were able to break ground on the Interpretive Center, which was named after Jane, the Jane Pinero Interpretive Center, which is the visitor center today at the Poppy Reserve. And, let's see if I can do this, yeah. This is Joe Pinero. He was still alive at the time of the dedication. This is Dorothy Bolt, right here. Here's another mm -hmm. photo from that day, April 1982. This is Joe um, at the dedication. He was Jane's husband and biggest fan. He was at, able to attend the Interpretive Center dedication, but sadly passed away shortly after. This is a plaque dedicated to Jane at the Interpretive Center at the Poppy Reserve. And this bust of Jane is now at the Poppy Reserve. And every year, the, the paintings that were purchased by the Wildflower Preservation Foundation were donated to the state park and they've acquired more since then. So there's quite a good collection of Jane's paintings there. And every year, there's an alcove where they're displayed and they, we bring out different paintings every year to display. There's usually a theme. I can't recall the theme this year, Janet. Do you remember? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I meant to mention, Janet is the vice president of Primdia, mm. and boy, has she been working hard because of the new POS system. So, but she hung in there, and we got it working, and now it's, it's working really well, but long hours and much worry later. <laughs> So after Jane passed, there were two great events that I was able to attend that celebrated her work. She donated her estate to the Theodore Payne Foundation, which is a very important a society 
for uh, native plants. They have a great nursery in Sunland and a lot of online sources as well. And they had a, they had a little art studio and they, they had her block prints on display, which is really interesting. And this is one example of a block print. She made her Christmas cards out of them. So this is a Christmas card that she made using that te technique of block printing. I'll set it over here so you can take a look at it later. And then really exciting was that the Huntington Library in San Marino put together a show called When They Were Wild. There were six, I believe, artists included that are all people that are renowned for painting native California wildflowers, and Jane was included in the show. These are two of her paintings that were loaned to the Huntington by the Theodore Payne Foundation um, for, the, for the show, and there were others at, there as well. And to end, I'm just gonna go through some of her beautiful paintings. We sell some of these at the Poppy Reserve, as well as we have note cards. I think we're raffling off a note, note card set tonight. They're both artistically beautiful and botanically correct. Bush Poppy. And of course, the Schultzia Californica. And I want to end with this quote from Adele Taylor, who knew Jane. The noble lives have been made richer and more meaningful because she walked among us. And an artist named Jan Sionis made this lovely painting of Joe and Jane. So if you go to our website, www.crimbia.org, and scroll down to About Us, I have several different articles about Jane that are linked there, including the one that I quoted from Milt, that was written by Milt Stark. Thank you. Thank you.